This is Jerome, K1DBC. All stations, please stand by. The Denver Radio Club Learning Net starts in five minutes. This is K1DBC. <clears throat> the DRC Learning Net will start in one minute. All stations, please stand by while the repeaters are placed into net mode.
this is Kilo One Delta Bravo Charlie K1 DBC. My name is Darone. Phonetically, that is Delta Oscar, Romeo Oscar November. I am net control for this net. This is a casual conversation where we can discuss ham radio and STEM steam topics in general. And thankfully, we have plenty of combined expertise and experience. We meet every Wednesday except the third Wednesday of the month at 7.30 p.m. Mountain Time on 145.490 and 448.625 repeaters here in Denver, Colorado. Both have a negative offset of 600 kilohertz, meaning you transmit on 144.890 or 448.025. This net can be broken at any time for emergency or priority traffic by using the word break. Is there any emergency or priority traffic at this time? This, uh, you can contact us uh, via email at drclearningnet at gmail.com or hamlearningnet at groups.io. Uh, groups.io, you can also visit us at uh, uh, groups.io, excuse me, forward slash g, forward slash hamlearningnet. We also stream our nets on youtube.com forward slash w-e-r-e-g-r-8, Whiskey Edward Romeo, Edward Golf Romeo 8, or if you search on YouTube for our club call sign W0TX, you'll be able to find it there as well. This is K1DBC Net Control. We will begin by inviting Elmers only to check in with or without traffic. All Elmers, please check in now. Alpha, Alpha, Zero, Juliet, Kilo, AA Zero, JK, Fred, Nevada. Good evening. All right, as always, uh, I'd like to welcome all of the following Elmers, AA0JK. Fred, thanks for checking in. Again, you don't have to be... Uh, um, the title of Elmer is really just a subject matter expert if you if you find yourself uh, to be a, a subject matter expert in any sort of uh, analog or digital or, or whatever you have. Feel free to always check in at that time. Uh, so one more call. Uh, if anybody would like to check in at the moment as an Elmer with or without traffic, all Elmers, please check in now. All right. Uh, all other check-ins to the net will be taken in alphabetical groups based on the first letter of the suffix of the operator's call sign. That would be the first letter after the number in their call sign. If you can, please try to use ITU phonetics as you check in and indicate if you have traffic or questions as you do. If your suffix begins with the letters A through M, alpha through Mike, please check in now. Good evening, Duran. Tom, K6HJV, Arvada, no traffic. Kilo Zero, Lima Alpha, India, K0LAI, Larry in Lakewood. November Zero, Echo Yankee Zulu, Jim in South Jeffco with a question.
All right, sorry about that. This is uh, K1DBC. Let's uh, go ahead and hold up there for just a moment. All right, this is K1DBC Net Control. I'd like to welcome the knowledge of the following check ins K0KPS Kevin, W0BKS Barb, K6HJV Tom, K0LAI Larry, and N0EYZ Jim, uh, with traffic, I believe, or somebody in there had traffic. If it wasn't Jim, uh, please let me know. Sorry, those beeps you were hearing was my radio. I didn't have it locked, so I was changing channels there. All right, this is uh, K1DBC Net Control. Uh, one more call. If uh, your call suffix begins with the letters A through M, alpha through Mike, please check in now. Kilo, Foxtrot, Zero, Alpha, Foxtrot, Quebec, Troy, Denver. All right, in that time, we'd like to welcome knowledge of following check-ins, KF0AFQTroy and KF0AWC Brian. Thank you both for checking in. All right, at this time, we'll go ahead and open up the old, whole alphabet. Excuse me. Uh, this is K1DBC Net Control. Uh, if your suffix uh, begins with the letters A through Z, alpha through Zulu, and you'd like to check into the Denver Radio Club ham learning net just for the count, or if you have any traffic or questions, please call now. Kilo Delta Zero, Romeo, Quebec, November, KD Zero, RQN, David from Westminster, no traffic. All right, this is K1DBC Net Control. I'd like to welcome Knowledge Flying Check-ins, uh, KD0RQN, David, and WD0CIV. Charles, thank you both for checking in. One more call if you'd like to check into the Denver Radio Club Ham Learning. We're taking all call suffixes, A through Z, Alpha through Zulu. Check in with your name, uh, call sign, and let us know if you have any traffic or questions. November zero, Tango, Romeo, Papa, Jim, and Lakewood with a question. Good evening. All right, this is K1DBC Net Control. That time we had N0TRP. Jim, with a question. Uh, there'll be plenty of more opportunities to check into the net. Uh, you feel free to do so at any um, pause in traffic or, or uh, at any uh, anytime um, you don't hear anything. Um, I'll take official calls throughout the net a couple times, though. One more call, though, at the moment, if you'd like to check into the Denver Radio Club Ham Learning Net uh, on the air, please do so with your call sign, uh, your name, and let us know if you have traffic or questions.
Okay, this is K1DBC Net Control. Again, we are streaming on YouTube.com. Um, if you search on YouTube for uh, W0TX, uh, just the call sign, uh, you should be able to find it there. Um, it's YouTube.com forward slash W-E-R-E-G-R-8. Or if you search for my call sign, it's on there as well. With that, though, I'll throw it over to Jim uh, N0EYZ with traffic. Go ahead. Yeah, thanks for my call. I just wonder what the uh, status is of the six meter repeater. I'm not having any luck getting on to it. Uh, so um, I just wonder if it's still operational or what's going on. Okay. Uh, good question about the six meter repeater. I know some traffic was passed over the last Sunday night net. Uh, I, I can't remember at the moment. But uh, Fred, A is your JK. Go ahead. A zero JK. Yes. Good evening. And yes, uh, uh, they were planning on uh, taking that uh, repeater uh, hardware in for repair and modification, uh, and uh, that could possibly be the situation. We haven't been uh, told uh, exactly whether or not uh, they were up there uh, uh, the last couple days or not, but they were planning on this week of uh, removing that uh, hardware, and Jerry was going to uh, take it to his uh, home shop for uh, upgrade, and then uh, hopefully uh, we'll hear from him in the near future as to when that is completed and reinstalled. So I would say right out hand, if you're having problems connecting, that that's probably the case. They finally had some decent weather to where they could get up there and uh, uh, with scheduled uh, help to take care of that uh, project. So AA0JK, getting the back to net control. And zero, he was it. Thanks a lot for the info. I didn't know if it was me, my antenna, or my radio, or what. So I'll just keep listening. Thanks a lot. HKB. All right. Thanks there, uh, AA zero JK Fred, for the follow up there. Um, yeah, it sounds like there's some maintenance going on. Uh, yeah, uh, HJV, uh, Tom, go ahead. Yeah, this is Tom, K6HJV. Yeah, uh, Jerry was going to pull that repeater down. There is a six-meter repeater operating out of uh, Parker. It's uh, reverse. The uh, input side is uh, uh, 51.5, and the uh, output is at 50.5. It's a... Uh, a plus one uh, shift on the um, uh, on it. So and it's the same. Uh, I think it's the same uh, uh, code that we use on the um, uh, the regular uh, repeater that uh, we use. So uh, I've got to look and see what that one is. But uh, anyway, it's a repeater and it's down in uh, Parker. And I can bring it up here in Arvada, so there's no problem with it. Yeah, it's uh, 107.2 is the uh, 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 code to get into that thing. And uh, so it's uh, it's just a reverse of what we've been doing, transmit on 50.5 and receive on 51.5. Hopefully that answers your question if you want to try a repeater, K6HJB. And zero E Y Z. Thanks a lot. I'll give it a try. All right, sounds good there. Yeah, and uh, there was the a recording from that the the May ninth um, meeting. Uh, sorry, this is a K one DBC. Uh, our Sunday meeting, and around 31 to 32 minutes in, uh, Jerry starts speaking about that. Um, really and uh, next meeting, which be, yeah, uh, he was uh, talking about uh, upcoming next meeting, and then uh, some other things there. 
Uh, but I believe he or, or somebody else had mentioned that this community repeater uh, maintenance either th this last weekend or th the weekend before. But yeah, um, plenty of opportunities. It sounds like there's, um, um, as uh, HJV Tom mentioned, there's uh, potentially another uh, six meter repeater you can uh, access. Um, um, but very, very cool. Anyone else on that uh, topic about our six meter repeater, six meter repeater uh, functionality, um, operations in general, uh, go ahead. All right, this is uh, Duran K1DBC. So yeah, six meters just for uh, all intents and purposes here. Um, it's right in front of my face and I'm not seeing it. 50 megahertz. This is an HF band. So I think it is available during the, the field day. I think uh, Orlin WW0LF has, has done some six meter operations uh, uh, during our 2019 field day. So it's op open for uh, RTT, Y, and data as well as a uh, phone and image. Uh, open up uh, for, uh, looks like all bands, extra, amateur, or advanced, general, and technicians. So there's HF capabilities out there. Um, even if you're uh, just a technician, uh, six meters is, a, is an option out there for you too as well. All right. Um, one more time, anyone else on the subject of six meter operations or our six meter repeater or anything else in regards to that? Go ahead. Okay, this is K1DBC Net Control. I'll go ahead and throw it over then to Jim N0TRP with a question. Go ahead, and it is yours. Yeah, N0TRP here. Uh, good evening, everybody. I'm just uh, trying to figure out what I want to do for logging uh, QSOs and then also for uh, QSLing. And uh, I, you know, I know there's N1MM out there, and I think a N3FJP software and a uh, for money ham radio deluxe software, and then. Uh, on the uh, QSL side, uh, there's the Logbook of the World and QRZ.com and ESQL and Cublog, and I'm just it's just kind of all of a mushy muddle here, and I'm just uh, wondering if someone could help me kind of clear that up. It's kind of what's the best way to go there. I mean, do you need to uh, log your uh, QSOs with all of these different sites, or is it does Logbook of the World cover it all, or does that cover all the bases? And then uh, maybe, Fred, if you're on a CW QSO with somebody and they say uh, PSE QSL, are they talking about a hard copy or which service they want it to? Or that, that that's So there are a lot of questions there. So if uh, anybody's got any insight, insight on that, I'd appreciate it. Thank you. Uh, N0TRP. A0JK. All right, sounds good there. Yeah, plenty of uh, information there, or a question there. Yeah, uh, TRP is regards to logging. Um, in my experiences through FT8, at least some of the digital modes, um, there's a, it allows you to aggregate those results between all of those. So you can use one program essentially to uh, post logs to all of those sites you mentioned because uh, yeah that is an amazing it's a lot of work to do by hand um i hope and i believe fn context should be exactly the same basically you'd have to kind of just do it by hand um with ft8 it kind of pops it up on its own but uh by I'm, I'm sure an fm contact you just you push a button you put the date and time the the the, the, the details you need and then it posts it to all of those sites uh so it just it takes a bit of automation. It takes a little bit of work to get those sorts of things set up. I don't have that offhand at the moment, but it is possible. That's not an issue. Uh, A zero JK Fred though, uh, go ahead. W zero T X repeater. A zero JK, uh, good resource. Uh, go to the A double R L and bring up the QSL services uh, web page. They've got quite a bit of uh, information there, and if you want a hard copy, 
which has always been uh, uh, a great collector's item. I got my walls covered with them. Uh, but uh, there's some expense to it here as postage rates have gone up over the years. And a lot of hams aren't, are reluctant to uh, uh, send out the hard copies. So we have to uh, uh, request it as uh, the CW that you uh, just mentioned. If they uh, request a QSL, I would uh, say that uh, they probably would like a hard copy. But if you are using the software logging, make sure that it is compatible with the ARRL. I think they've got a couple of them there that they recognize. And by using that uh, and getting your information entered into those uh, logging services, you will automatically get credit for that QSO. And uh, uh, anything other than uh, what I've just mentioned, bring up the ARRL uh, website there on QSL services. AA0JK, back to net control. TRP. Excellent. Thank you there, uh, Fred, for that follow up as well. Yeah, I, I, I forgot to kind of. Talk, talk on that as well. Yeah, the uh, QSL uh, part of that, of, of sending and receiving QSL cards, which is kind of a really awesome thing that we should be able to still be able to continue to do. And, and yeah, I mean, as physical medium becomes harder to, uh, as digital medium becomes easier to replicate, it's it's harder f to justify for, for organizations to do this. And so, yeah, the ARL uh, has the Bureau uh, incoming and outgoing uh, QSL services um, so if you're a member of them, or I don't even know if you need to, well, yeah, ARML members, it looks like. Uh, so yeah, they have a pretty good um, uh, information on their uh, ARL.org. Uh, um, if you look up uh, the QSL, or uh, yeah, the QSL services. Uh, TRP, uh, go ahead. Yeah, n TRP. Uh, thanks, Drone, and I've been, it's been helpful to watch your uh, screen here, too, so that's uh, that's been helpful. Fred, thank you very much for the information in uh, now, I've been poking around there, but just because trying to uh, see what might be the best uh, concoction to settle on here. So, uh, but that's uh, been helpful. Uh, so, uh, primarily uh, phone and uh, CW contacts is what I'm interested. I realize that the FDA can uh, pretty much uh, handle all that automatically. But uh, anyway, thanks so much for the info. Appreciate it. Uh, N0TRP, back to net. Comment. All right, sounds good there, uh, TRP. Yeah, Jim, or uh, Fred, excuse me, uh, AE0JK, go ahead. Just an additional note, uh, the ARRL, uh, you can send your your uh, QSL cards uh, to them, especially if, you know, they're going to go international, but they will also uh, process them and send them out to the appropriate uh, areas that handle the QSL cards. And the zero, as in our call letters, has a uh, manager or an individual that processes uh, the QSL cards for those people in the uh, zero uh, zone. And you will need to uh, send them uh, postage and uh, a, a, an envelope have an envelope on file with them so that they can insert uh, any incoming QSL cards for you and mail them to you. But uh, make note, they uh, specify a certain size requirement for the envelopes. And in the past, I have not been able to find that, that uh, uh, particular size. The ones I've tried sending to them were too large. <laughs> But uh, I had to resort to uh, uh, just going ahead and sending them uh, sufficient funds so that they will uh, use they, their own uh, envelopes 
and periodically as your uh, QSL uh, carts uh, stack up there in their little uh, pigeonhole, cubbyhole, they will gather those up, stick them in a cart, uh, do the stick and paste uh, postage, and mail them off to you. So make sure that uh, if you want hard copies, especially if you are doing a lot, doing a lot of DX, it's much less expensive to use the Bureau and let them process uh, uh, the QSL cards and uh, uh, make sure that uh, you are all set up with your zero bureau manager with the appropriate uh, needed funds there for handling the QSL cards. And they are great to get in the mail, great to collect. AA0JK. Yep. N0 TRP, uh, thanks, Fred. Uh, appreciate it very much. Uh, N0 TRP, back to net. All right, sounds good there. Yeah, uh, logging, uh, there's definitely a, a bit of automation to it. I know there's a lot of places you can uh, post your logs to. Uh, but you can kind of set it up so it, it kind of propagates out there. Um, and then yeah, and, and is, is in regards to the QSL cards, yeah, as I'm just scrolling through here, uh, just some photos of uh, some Kumamoto, Japan, uh, some Germany amateur radio station, uh, Fairbanks, Alaska, this uh, Pride group, uh, radio group, um, and the NA1SS, uh, RSO, uh, 0ISS, the amateur radio on the R International Space Station, uh, K K6 LMS, yeah, as we've been talking about. Um, you know, it's really, really cool. Um, hopefully we can kind of continue this tradition, although um, print media is dying, but it's ma mass print media is dying, so hopefully we can continue on this tradition of, of receiving these cards in the mail and uh, you kind of just have to uh, figure out the best way to, to do that. Um, you, you can do it within within the ARL or with outside, outside of that. So uh, yeah, in, great, uh, great information there. All right, this is K1DBC Net Control for the Denver Radio Club Ham Learning Net. Anything, anyone else on the topic while we're on here, uh, on the topic, excuse me, of uh, QSL cards? Um, uh, recently we did mention it, it doesn't need to be just voice contacts. The, uh, the ARIS, uh, the International Space Station, you can do uh, vid via digital uh, repeater. So if you have any uh, uh, packet radio, APRS-capable radio, uh, this person did it via their Anytone 878 and an Aero 2Yagi. Uh, so they just needed to figure out the signal paths, and uh, they were able to uh, digipeat uh, a packet uh, off the uh, International Space Station. So it's, it doesn't even doesn't need to be uh, just uh, voice simply. So uh, really neat stuff. One more call. Anyone else out there while we're talking about QSL cards? Go ahead. JK. Yeah, easier JK. Fred, go ahead. Along those same lines. Uh, if you are working towards uh, awards and certificates, like, uh, for example, work all states, uh, working uh, 100 continents, uh, the log, your computer logging, your digital logging would probably be the best. That way you don't have to uh, send in verification, QSL uh, verification that you actually work the station. That can get uh, a little bit uh, uh, cumbersome. So if you are working for certificates, uh, do the electronic uh, uh, logging. Use one of the logging programs that the ARRL recognizes. AA0JK, back to net control. All right, yeah, we kind of only just skimmed that subject there, logging in general. Uh, it, um, I, I don't log much. I mean, w w in terms of uh, these types of, uh, like this net specifically, I don't log. I mean, some people can. That's not an issue. Uh, I really just don't. Uh, 
I just don't do too much logging in general other than uh, some of the digital. But yeah, logging is very, very important. I mean, if, if you can put down, in a, I mean, a log is basically who you contacted, what band, different conditions, as much as you can gather. And then now in these digital modes, you can, uh, it's all done automatically, luckily. Uh, so there's plenty of, there's uh, the, the ARRL has logbook of the world. Uh, it's a little bit of a process to get uh, started and get up on there. You have to kind of uh, download a, a program, get a certificate, and then you get something in the mail. And then, um, but it's a it's a really just good secure way of uh, proving it's you that's that are performing these contacts. Um, but then there's other options out there. Uh, there's half a dozen at least uh, logging uh, platforms. Um, Luckily, though, some of the a lot of the programs nowadays you can you can as we've spoken about aggregate all those together. So I, I don't have any notes offhand about how to do that, but I'll try to dig some of that up because I I was doing that with with FT8 uh, a, a year or so back. But uh, yeah, yeah, great uh, comments there on on logging. Okay, so at the moment uh, I'll go ahead and actually. Uh, Take official check-ins. Uh, my name is Daron Kilo One Delta Bravo Charlie. Uh, name phonetically is Delta Oscar Romeo Oscar November. If you've just tuned in, I'm Net Control for the Denver Radio Club Learning Net. It's an on-air meeting for amateur radio seeking help, and Elmer's giving your time to help us. Everyone is welcome to join in. If there's anyone who wishes to check in at this time, please do so with your call sign using IT Phonetics, your name, and state if you have any traffic or questions for the net. Zero, Sierra Uniform Mike, Jonathan, Lakewood, no traffic. Kilo Sierra, Zero Echo, KS Zero E, Alex in Denver. NB, Randy, Aurora, no traffic. All right, this is uh, K1DBC Net Control, uh, Denver Radio Club. Um, I'd like to welcome Knowledge of the Following Check-ins, KE0SUM, Jonathan. <clears throat> Excuse me, Jonathan. KS0E, Alex. Uh, KD0EIR, Jack. Got you checked in online. Thanks for checking in. Uh, and then there was a KN0 call, uh, Brad, I thought, and I, I was uh, paying attention to something else. I apologize about that. Uh, can you go ahead and call once more? I'm sorry, uh, I mixed up there even more. Uh, I had after that I had KF zero BHR Brad with a question. I, I got you checked in there. Uh, there was one other call sign. I apologize. Um, KN zero I thought call uh, in there. Uh, if you go ahead and try once more, go ahead. All right, this is uh, K1DBC Net Control. If somebody did try to check in there and I didn't call your call sign, go ahead and try once more. I'll uh, try to dig it up here real quick as well. All 
Dark Ace. Sorry about that, Randy. A-E-0-N-B. Uh, I got you checked in there. W zero Fox Fox Charlie Jerry no traffic thank you. It's almost as like I have dyslexia sometimes. <laughs> There's too many numbers and names. Okay. Okay, that time we had W zero FFC Jerry got you checked in as well. Anyone else at the moment who'd like to check into the Denver Radio Club Ham Learning Net just for the counter? If you have any traffic or questions, uh, please do so with your uh, call sign, your name, and let us know if you have any uh, uh, traffic or questions. Please call in. Now, A E, that's an, that's an interesting like prefix. Hmm. Okay, um, with that, I'll go ahead and throw it over to Brad, KF0BHR, with a question. Go ahead. I am so sorry. I forgot to mention your your signal is uh, it seems okay, but your like the volume is very 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 low. You you were speaking about um, uh, W0TX Club and I think RMRL or Armham another club, um, but the voice is very very low. I don't know if there's any any way you can um, increase uh, <laughs> gain or, uh, or or maybe put your if you put your uh, uh, mouth a little bit closer to the microphone that might uh, help a little bit better. If you want to try it again once more, sorry about that. Go ahead. This is uh, K1DBC Net Control. Sorry about that, uh, Brad. I, I don't know if uh, you caught me that time, uh, but if you want to try and go ahead and uh, get a signal report, uh, we could hear you, but it was very, very low. If you want to try uh, again, uh, KF0BHR, go ahead. W0TX, repeater. Okay, no problem. Um. All right, we actually got him online here um, asking about um, as a new ham, what's the difference between DMR, uh, DRC, uh, etc. Uh, it just so happens to be a similar uh, acronyms. Um, oh, other clubs. Okay, no, that makes more sense. Here, let me drop for a moment. So on uh, YouTube, uh, Brad was uh, asking, um, what's the difference between all the local clubs? That's a great question. Um, I don't know why there's no... Essentially, it's just uh, rooted in... There's a lot of history um, within these clubs um, and just different interests. And uh, they have uh, they serve different needs and uh, wants of the community. Uh, they're all nonprofits. Um, 501c3s, so they're all kind of dependent on the the membership 
uh, numbers that they have. Um, as we're looking out the W0TX.org website here, uh, they've been around since 1917. Um, and then, uh, yeah, as you mentioned, the, another another good club is uh, RMR. Um, there's RMRL uh, or there's RM Ham is a really nice, a really good one as well. Uh, they find their niche within um, kind of digital radio and um, IP networking and, and like RF linking between them, uh, between repeater sites. And, uh, you know, it's a good question. I, I wish there were more uh, collaboration between the clubs and um, it would be kind of nice to see. But uh, I, I think it's really just dependent on, on the clubs. Uh, let me drop here just for a moment. Wants and needs, and uh, the, the purposes uh, that they serve. We have our served agencies. We have we work with the city of Le uh, Lakewood and Wheat Ridge. Um, and uh, if if you look at our, um, you kind of you can kind of uh, kind of get an indication a little bit sometimes if you look at uh, at least ours with officers and, and what what our intentions were trying to be and are or still try to be is with um, contesting emergency communications. Um, but it, it, it kind of just, it's probably just regional needs and wants. So with that though, I'll just throw it out to the net. So the question was kind of what, what's the, the difference between uh, different uh, radio clubs uh, here or, or nationally or um, things like that. JK. Yeah, A-A-Zero-JK, go ahead. AA0JK. Uh, yeah, uh, W0TX is the best. Uh, 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 I digress. No, the, the, all these groups are great. I think a lot has to do with your location in relation to uh, the clubs uh, geographically as to whether or not it's convenient for you to... Uh, participate in their activities. Uh, go in to their websites and take a look uh, at what they have to offer and uh, the club that uh, happens to be within a reasonable uh, uh, location there for you to participate in their activities. Highly recommend that uh, you uh, join them. Also, multiple uh, uh, memberships are great because all these clubs, including us here at W0TX, are dependent uh, upon uh, uh, membership dues to maintain our repeaters and uh, our programs. So, uh, you know, definitely uh, we all need uh, the, the revenue there to keep things up and running. But I think the only real big major difference uh, that you're going to find is location, 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 uh, which uh, groups are in the vicinity where you are at and whether or not you can participate in their activities. Other than that, uh, you know, they do have their repeaters also. So take a look and see what the repeaters have to offer in relation to your interests. So join w 0 TX, the Denver Radio Club, for sure. <laughs> AA0JK, back to net control. All right, thanks there, Fred, uh, for the follow-up. Uh, yeah, we see a lot of overlaps as well um, with, with uh, private public uh, military organizations having uh, different clubs uh, there's this the Denver Water Amateur Radio Club for the for the Denver uh, government uh, their their water uh, um, group has uh, an amateur radio club uh, we've been approached by some uh, local uh, military organizations to to get started up within uh, that um, yeah it's really really interesting um, plenty of uh, special interest groups um, very, very special interests sometimes, and really kind of just depending on the just the luck of the draw. Edge of Space Sciences is a group that uh, does a lot of um, um, balloon launches and has a lot of um, uh, uh, partnerships with local uh, 
um, universities to to put up payloads, and it's just it's it's really really interesting um, how here in Colorado we have all of these uh, opportunities. So, yeah, uh, AARL has uh, affiliated clubs. Um, so if you go to arl.org and search by uh, zip code, uh, yeah, as Fred mentioned, it's kind of really just dependent on the uh, on the location. Um, but then sometimes uh, there's a special uh, services they're able to be provided. So um, great question there, uh, BHR. I don't know if you have any other follow-up here on uh, YouTube or uh, if, you, if you want to try on the air, go ahead. Yeah, A zero JK. Fred, go ahead. A zero JK. Yeah, go into each one of the clubs and take a look at their repeater listings and uh, their schedules uh, that they have uh, throughout the week on the club repeaters. Uh, an example is uh, if you have an uh, interest in astronomy, there's a net that. Uh, uh, comes on every, I believe it's every Tuesday evening, and they uh, talk about astronomy. And just like uh, Daron was saying, the uh, balloon launch folks, uh, look look on their listings of, of uh, repeaters and activities throughout the week. And uh, you can see if there's anything there that's uh, uh, of interest to you and be sure to support them accordingly. AA0JK, back to net control. Excellent, thanks there, Fred. Yeah, these are all nonprofit organizations and you can, you don't really need to be a member really to, to take part in any of our activities or operate on any of our equipment or infrastructure. Um, the it, it really just goes to help us uh, do better and, and other clubs do better um, uh, and do more for club members. And so, yeah, I mean, if, if you are a club member and you do, uh, are you a dues paying member, you know, make your voice heard to these clubs. Um, and and if, if they state they have an interest in certain things or you have an interest in uh, certain things, um, you know, it, it never hurts to just uh, have your voice uh, known. So, I mean, if you are a Denver Radio Club um, member, for example, W0TX at W0TX.org, e feel free to email that and uh, have your uh, voice heard. Um, this club here is for you, and we want to try to strive to do better and, and uh, provide services that uh, that you would like. So, um, yeah, great topic. Um all right, um, let me drop here for a moment. All right, anyone else on the topic of nonprofits, 501c3s, uh, differences in uh, ham radio clubs, um, anything else on that, uh, please call now. Okay, this is Daron, K1WC Net Control for the Denver Radio Club Ham Learning It. Um, we don't necessarily have a hard stop, but uh, we normally end in about uh, 10 to 15 minutes or so. Um, I can pass a few things, but if anybody else has any other comments, questions, check-ins, anything else you'd like to bring up for the net, please call now. Okay, as mentioned on the uh, past Sunday Night Net, uh, this is uh, K1DBC um, speaking about um, nonprofits and volunteering and uh, getting involved. Uh, we have our upcoming uh, 21 uh, Field Day. Um, so if you have any interest in uh, playing radio, um, showing uh, yourself and uh, your, uh, your community that you're able to um, 
operate radio if you want uh, in, in, the, uh, in the field. Uh, this is a great way to, uh, a good volunteer um, effort, um, a, an opportunity, um, plenty of things to do. Um, if you go to Sorry about that. I uh, dropped there for a moment. Uh, my website, k1dbc.com, kilo1deltabravocharlie.com. Just right on the front page, there's an, uh, a link there for field day updates. Um, w0tx.org as well. If you go to uh, that forward slash uh, field day dash uh, dot htm, uh, there's a link there. Um, there's a quick little video as, as, far, as well as a, a little questionnaire. Um, have had quite a good uh, follow-up here. Uh, let me see if I can bring that link up here. Uh, so, so far we've had about uh, 38, or we've had 38 uh, people respond. Awesome to see. It's just a nice way to uh, gauge uh, who can show up. Um, uh, one day, both days, etc. If you want to camp, if you want to use your own equipment, and then plenty of people uh, um, uh, raising their hand to volunteer, which is awesome to see. So again, this is another uh, great way to get involved. You really don't need to be a member, or you don't need to be a member. You don't need to be licensed. A lot of uh, opportunity to just uh, get involved, operate, and uh, have a lot of fun. So um, yeah, uh, field day, June 26th, 27th. Um, kind of skipped over that. It is just a, a, a way to uh, operate on the air for 24 hours and uh, kind of just uh, camp and have fun. If you did indicate <clears throat> that you wanted to volunteer, I'm still trying to figure out the best way to go about it, but I, I might be having like a, a schedule or like a, an opportunity to sign up for different shifts if you want in 30 or 60 minute increments. It is a 24 hour event, but we really only operate pretty much during the daytime. Um, but uh, yeah, people here opportunity uh, volunteer to do general support, get on the air, meal prep, uh, public relations, um, some talks, plenty of uh, setup and breakdown, uh, tour guides, Elmers, uh, transportation. So, uh, Definitely thank you all for uh, signing up so far, and I, I really hope that uh, we'll have a, a good field day this year. Uh, so you will see um, more info on that if you indicated you wanted to uh, volunteer, as well as uh, just general info to the, the club members. All right, this is K1DBC Net Control. Does anybody have any comments, questions in regards to field day or anything else? Please call now. Yeah, k 6 HGV, go ahead. <laughs> this is k 6 HGV. Yeah, I did the impossible deal while I was doing some multitasking. I went ahead and tried to bring that Parker uh, six meter repeater up. It's coming up. Uh, the input frequency is 50.5, output is 51.5, and the tone is 107.2. So, uh, at least I'm uh, bringing it up uh, from here at 72nd in Wadsworth. So I just thought I'd pass that on to the gentleman that was uh, curious about uh, the six meter repeater. In zero, he was it. Thanks a lot for the info. I'll try to program a new radio for it. Well, I'm running a 7300 here, so uh, you just, uh, make sure it's a, it's a plus. Uh, you're going up in frequency to receive and not down. Roger that. It's just basically a program. I have a computer downstairs, my radio plugged into it, Alex, and then uh, uh, there's a server application, and then I just have, I'm on a separate computer right now using the client, um, and then just capturing that through the... Um, Broadcasting software. Back up, bro. <laughs> Sounds good there, uh, HJV, Tom. And uh, 
uh, EYZ. Yeah. Um, yeah. Sounds like another opportunity for uh, six meter operations there. Uh, yeah, there was uh, just trying to follow up at the same time, trying to multitask. Uh, Alex had uh, asked about, um, I have, uh, uh, the radio, um, that shows the the receive and transmit when I'm receiving and transmitting. So there's just some applications I've brought up in the past as well. If you go to uh, remotehams.com as, as well, I was talking about in the past. So yeah, very, very cool on the uh, six meter. Mm-hmm. All right, uh, K1, this is K1DBC Net Control. Does anyone else have any other comments, questions, check-ins, anything else you'd like to bring up for the ham learning net? Please call now. All right, this is K1DBC Net Control. I can bring up a couple things here, and then uh, we can uh, put it back out to the net and see if anybody else has anything, and uh, go from there. JK. Yeah, easier, JK, go ahead. JK, yeah, speaking of six meters, uh, there's an article here uh, on the ARRL website, Geomatic, Geomagnetic Storm Season uh, is over. Uh, I don't totally agree with that, but uh, I digress. What is interesting, though, is that they made mention that June and July is the great time for DX openings on six meters. And they say that this particular uh, time of the month, uh, uh, time of the year, that uh, it, it is most productive for chasing DX. Uh, and they're saying that uh, uh, distances of uh, around 8,700 miles so if you are into a six meter operation, you have got a great opportunity coming up here in the next couple of months. So jump in there and as band conditions uh, permit, uh, between geomagnetic storms, <laughs> get in there and get some DX on six meters. AA0JK, back to net control. Yeah, N zero U I Z. That's why I want to get set up with my new antenna and my new radio. So uh, be ready for it. Thanks a lot for the info. N zero U I Z. Clear. Okay. As we enter into the season, keep us posted on uh, how the band uh, treats you and what kind of contacts you are able to make. So we always appreciate some feedback. Thank you. AA zero JK. Back to net control. All right, thanks there, uh, A0JK Fred, for the uh, follow-up on there on uh, the six-meter uh, opening according to, um, or over, in regards to this article here, which uh, there may be some, uh, some some difference of opinion there. So yeah, um, yeah, you just have to kind of try the, try the bands, see what's happening, um, you know, it, depending on the, the distance you want to go. Um, you know, it may not be closed. So, uh, very, very cool there. Thanks there, Fred. Uh, this is K1DBC Net Control. So yeah, a couple more things here. Um, yeah, again, more over on ARRL.org forward slash news. Uh, yeah, as mentioned, uh, the geo, according uh, to some reports and uh, certain uh, certain information, uh, there there may be a, a season is over. So uh, information on there. Uh, Bigfoot Radio Net <laughs> Spring Expedition 2021 underway. Uh, so there is the uh, underway until May 15th. Uh, zero hundred 
uh, through 0801 UTC on 14.225 and 7.255. A Bigfoot radio net expedition team will return to the Kiamachi Mountains of southern eastern, or southeastern, excuse me, Oklahoma in the winding stair mountains of southwestern Arkansas in the Wichita uh, National Forest. Marine mobile operations via pierogi, uh, uh, no, no, uh, Pierogue and canoe in various bayous, swamps, and lakes are possible. Uh, Bigfoot has been seen and heard in these parts. Track progress and send messages via APRS to K5, uh, KF5THB-7. Um, more info on arl.org forward slash news. All right, this is K1DBC Net Control. Another article here um, from ARL and um, really links to the IEEE, um, which is the um, standards organization for the Institute of Electrical and Electronics Engineers, a professional association for electronic engineering and electrical engineering with its corporate office in New York, uh, founded in uh, 1963. Uh, they are the foremost uh, kind of standards on how... Uh, um, on how standards are created and, 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 and things like that. So like uh, the standards for wireless, wired internet, things like that. Uh, they're putting up a webinar uh, entitled RF Exposure in the Time of Conspiracies, uh, set from May the 12th. That was today. <laughs> uh, one hour event, 1800 UTC. Um, the group uh, committee on man and radiation has uh, issued an invitation to the webinar. Uh, it's a group of experts on health and safety issues related to electromagnetic fields from power lines through microwave frequency ranges. It fo it, its primary focus is on biological effects of non-ionizing electromagnetic radiation. The real idea behind the webinar is to highlight some of the news articles, comments, etc., that purport to declare the hazardous nature, nature of exposure to weak R fields, such as those posed by new 5G wireless communication base stations uh, and some other things. Explain how they are not scientifically based and possibly some ideas on how to better communicate what we really know about potential health effects. Uh, so, yeah, this is in, in a time of misinformation and, and conspiracies, it's, it's always best to just really go to the source, the, the, the groups and organizations that have been with running uh, electrical engineering and, um, and, and the science sciences and of this uh, for, for a long, long time. So um, they should hopefully have that on YouTube here soon. Uh, but uh, another great article I wanted to highlight there. So that was the um, on May, May the 6th, the IEEE Com Committee webinar, ARF Exposure in the Time of Conspiracies. I don't have much more at the moment. I can bring up a couple things if needed, but uh, I'll go ahead and throw it back out to the uh, the net. This is K1DBC Net Control for the Denver Radio Club Ham Learning Net. Does anybody have any comments, questions, check-ins, anything else you'd like to bring up for the net? Please call now. All right, another website uh, we love to mention here is rtl-sdr.com. Uh, some brief articles here of a cloning a garage key, a garage opener key with a, a, a software-defined radio, a universal radio hacker, piece of software, and Arduino. Uh, so this uh, person, uh, Adam uh, Loboda, uh, has uploaded a video showing how to clone his garage opener with an Arduino and a software-defined radio ends a piece of software. So uh, really easy nowadays to get into, excuse me, uh, transmitting radio um, as long as you're within the legal bands or uh, legal requirements for uh, research purposes, et cetera, et cetera, things like that. So uh, really, really interesting article there. Another article real quick here, PhD candidate researcher at uh, University of uh, Madrid 
um, Ramiro uh, Gutierrez has put it together a software defined uh, software defined radio radio platform called uh, Migu. Um, it is a radio which is flexible but power hungry with uh, it. Uh, let me see. Capable of operating in 433 megahertz, 868 megahertz, and 2.4 gigahertz at a sample rate of four. Uh, I think it's mega samples uh, per second in software defined uh, radio mode. So um, really interesting. Uh, this isn't a commercial product. You have to, you know, download the the, the design files and a bill of materials uh, and and go source the the product um, uh, pieces you need and 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 put it together. But it's a um, a uh, transceiver that allows for um, uh, development on with F- FPGA, ARM3 core por- tra- uh, uh, processor. Uh, so state of the art, and um, yeah, pretty neat. All right, this is K1DBC Net Control. That's about all that I have at the moment. Again, more info on that if you have any interest in. Uh, radio and how it uh, gets in uh, interactions with software and things like that uh, rtl-sdr.com all right with that i'll probably start to uh, close up to now i'll go ahead and take any last uh, calls or uh, excuse me um i guess at the moment i'll take any other uh, further comments questions check-ins or anything else for the net please call now No worries, KE0OJI Tom got you checked in. Thank you for checking in. Thank you for running the net. All right, this is K1DBC Net Control for the Denver Radio Club Ham Learning Net. This will be the final call. Any other comments, questions, uh, last minute check ins, anything else you'd like to bring up for the net, please call now. Okay, with that, then I'll go ahead and start to wrap things up. Uh, my name is Daron, call sign K1DBC. Uh, thank you all for joining me here this evening, and um, it's nice to be able to continue this uh, meeting. Sorry about that, I was having the, some issues there. Um, yeah. Uh, very very cool. Appreciate everyone checking in. We had uh, approximately or we had 19 check-ins. Appreciate everyone checking in uh, online or on the air. Um, if you wish to contact us uh, with any topic suggestions or to set a date to act as uh, Net Control or Elmer, you may do so via email at uh, drclearningnet at gmail.com, hamlearningnet at groups.io, or you can go to groups.io forward slash g forward slash hamlearningnet, or if you search on YouTube. We do stream our nets on there, and they're on there for archival purposes as well. So if you search for uh, W0TX, um, if you type things right, um, or my call sign K1DBC, you should be able to find it there. There are links on our website, W0TX.org. It's a little tough to find them, but if you search on the, um, the netlist sites, if you go down to the Wednesday night learning learning net. Uh, you can also find links to uh, our groups.io and YouTube there as well. All right, this evening we had a total of nineteen check-ins. I think I already mentioned that. Um, so with that, um, or I'm sorry, we did have nineteen check-ins. Um, and uh, we'd like to thank everyone who, appreciate, or who participated. We especially appreciate and thank our Elmers. Thanks to the Denver Radio Club for allowing us to use the repeaters for this net. 
Uh, net information, if you go to w0tx.org or .net or .com, it works on all three. Uh, you can find more info on our club as well as upcoming events. Uh, our next topic is going to be next week, May 19th, 7 p.m. Presentation is Stealth Attic Antennas. Presented by Bill, W6OAV, and John, W6NBC. I'm going to be covering about if you live in a covenant-controlled covenant neighborhood or otherwise wish to put up a stealth antenna, uh, but efficient, um, an HF attic antenna. Uh, so more info on that. Uh, Bill will be discussing the successful experiments experiences with the various HF uh, compact attic antennas, uh, then a video in, uh, titled Jumbo Loading Coil for Concealed Attic Dipoles uh, produced by John W6NBC. Again, more info, w0tx.org. Uh, halfway down through the page, there's a meet.google link. Uh, 7 p.m. is the meeting. And uh, at 6 p.m., though, just an hour earlier, is an Elmer session. So it's very similar to this, just a general Q&A, show and tell. Uh, so you don't need to be a, a club member or ham radio operator to join that. Um, just uh, come and click in and um, join in on the air there. Again, everyone is welcome to that. Um, at this time, um, all stations, please stand by while the repeaters are placed into normal mode. All right, this is K1DBC Net Control. Thanks all for joining here uh, continuously. Appreciate uh, um, larger turnouts. Appreciate uh, pe people uh, checking in online. Um, so, um, yeah, glad to see all that healthy turnouts. So, again, we'll see you all uh, online next week. Uh, this is K1DBC Net Control. Uh, I am 7-3. I am clear. All right. Everyone, thanks for uh, joining here online. I hope to uh, try to put more production quality into this as I can. Um, you never have to like or subscribe or anything like that. There's this, there's no uh, monetization on this channel. Um, subscribing does make it easier if you ever want to find it down the road. Um, I really do hope to transition this to the uh, the W0TX official uh, YouTube uh, webpage at some point. Uh, I think that'd be a lot easier for, for the club and people finding things. Um, but I'm glad to be doing it here. Uh, if you ever want to see a backlog, as I've always mentioned, there's, there's always that stuff. And if you ever want to see anything in the future, let me know. So, um, yeah, we'll go from there. Uh, this is K1DBC and Jerome. Y'all take care.